I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Okay, we will do roll call. Um, Chris, Party. Cheryl Hancock here. Anita Jagodinsky here. Kate Mayer. She is excused. Lisa Collins. She is excused. Tim Mettinger here. Gary Dunlap here. Tom Cruise here. And Biff Young here. Oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I would note that five of the seven school board members are present, so we do have a quorum. Approval of the agenda. Uh, the agenda has been posted, distributed, and sent to the local media. With this in mind, are there any changes to the agenda at this time? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as published. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, a motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Okay, a motion has been made and seconded to approve the agenda as published. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Public participation. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time? We ask that a five minute time limit per person be followed. Please come forward, state your name, address, and topic to be addressed. I don't see anyone coming forward, so we will move on to recognition and thank yous. Dr. Mueller. Hey. Well, first tonight, we'd like to um, say thank you to Linda Tempe for her generous donation of encyclopedias and books to the Prairie View Elementary students. And then um, Kimberly and Scott Phillips um, gave a generous donation towards the soccer scoreboard um, of $1,000, which they're working towards uh, the funding of, which is very generous of them. And then um, I just would like to uh, recognize Mike Gasper, who I don't... He's probably preparing for Friday's big event right now. But anyways, he's our supervisor of nutrition services. And he's been selected as a future leader award recipient. And this is actually um, a recognition nationally to serve on an association and represent Wisconsin. And so he will get the opportunity to actually network with people around the nation, which is a great honor. And I see we have in our audience who would like to recognize Karen Coleman if she wouldn't mind coming up, coming forward, and um, she has been awarded a national recognition, and I'll let Mark go into more detail, um, and named the NFHS Coaches Association Gymnastic Coach of the Year. Um, and we'll let you know of more celebrations coming forth, but this is an amazing honor. Um, she was named out of all of the United States of America, the coach of, for gymnastics of the year. And she is right here in Holman, and we are so fortunate to have her here and serving our, our students and community and so forth. But I will let you, Mark, if you'd like to say a few words. And As Dr. Mueller said, this is very special as there are only 25 coaches across the nation that were recognized nationally uh, for being a coach of the year by the National Federation of High School Association. And uh, Karen has a long list of accomplishments. Uh, this particular award looked at different criteria that looked at her career coaching record, her community service, involvement in other school activities, her involvement in professional organizations at the local, state, and national level, and, and also her basic philosophy of working with kids in, in athletics. So those are the criteria. But, if you look back over the years at, at all the things that Karen has accomplished, and this is dangerous to do for me because I'm not sure I'll miss it. <laughs> but uh, I'll just mention a few of the things that Karen has accomplished over the years. She's been in the Wisconsin Gymnastics Coaches Association of Hall of Fame. That happened in 2006. She's led 16 teams to state meets. She has two division state titles as a team in 2005 and 2006. Division II state runner-up as a team in 89 and 94. Division II third place finishes at state in 88, 93, <coughs> 2001, 2002, and 2007. She's coached two individual champions in the vault, uh, Aaron Jennings in 2008 and Emma Madsen in 2013. She's won 11 of the 17 NBC Gymnastics Championships 
and she has been uh, nominated or given the NBC Gymnastics Coach of the Year seven times. So quite a list of accomplishments <laughs> that I could dig up on Karen, and uh, she's done an amazing job for, for Holman students. So I'd like to congratulate her and present her with a plaque for the MFHS Coach of the Year for the State of Wisconsin. That is the recognition, and thank you, Karen, on behalf of the Board of Directors. Congratulations. There she is not listening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, congratulations on behalf of the Board of Directors. I know as someone involved in gymnastics, I've always been very, very proud of the work that she's done. In fact, she's been here so long, I actually coached against her. I was a coach. <laughs> years and I've been judging for 30 years so oh my that goodness. tells you anything so um, district administrators report yeah um, one thing I wanted to touch on is um, academics are uh, obviously our golden part of our district the thing that's we take heart to and a reason we're here is to educate the students and um, we learned in the last in our press release this last week that um, we had the I don't know if you say highest or best English language arts scores in the county, um, even on top of on Alaska for the Badger exam, which is our grade three through eight students. So, you know, we were very excited. This this is due to a lot of the hard work um, done. You know, I think of our curriculum instruction department and all the, the the leadership there and all the hard work by the teachers in the writing, in the language, in the reading, and so forth. Um, so. And then also we were second in math um, to Analaska, very close. We were 58.3% proficient advance with Analaska 59.6. So, you know, that, that's, you know, we're right up there in the academics and the English language arts and math, which is something just to be so proud of in, in the district in that. And then um, we have such well-rounded students. So academically, they're doing fantastic. Then we had our show choir um, at, went and attended the show choir classic held in on Alaska and they made it to the finals and later placed fourth runner-up in the mix of some of the best groups in the Midwest so this wasn't just our area and Homan was the only Wisconsin school to represent the final sing-off in the evening so they are really having a great season too um, in that and then just our, our wrestling group put on another successful bi-state wrestling tournament um, at the end of December. And then we also just recently, was it last weekend or the week before, we had our um, McLean, did I say McLean? I hope I said that correctly. I apologize if I didn't. Gymnastic Invitational um, at the high school in that. So thank you to all the parents and community volunteers that helped to support these events and make them so successful. Um, we have down at the pump house down in La Crosse right now, there is um, our elementary school students, their art is being exhibited, and that goes on until through February 20th. So um, between five and seven at night, you can visit down at the pump house and see the great works of art of our elementary students. And last, on Friday, this Friday is our winner, winner, chicken dinner deuce. <laughs> so what this is, as you know, is our FFA raises their own chickens and their corn on the cob, and we serve our own food we've raised um, in our district as our, in our um, food service program to our students. So it's a big event. It's going on at all of our schools. So come join us for a, a really good lunch on Friday. So, thank you. Hey, thank you very much. 
Um, reports and discussion, the wellness committee presentation. I say, I think we had some other folks. <laughs> Our wellness committee is very involved with a lot of different parts in the district, and they're going to share some of that tonight with us. So, I know we've been hearing about wellness for a couple of years as we've talked about changes in insurance and so they did uh, present at our uh, personnel and governance committee and so we were really interested in that presentation and thought it would be a great one for you to see so all right sorry the monitor wasn't on here we go we're getting good. there all right so um tonight we'll just be pre presenting a kind of a 10,000 foot view overview of the wellness committee. Um, we've never formally come to the board to give an update. So um, as Cheryl said, we came and talked to personal and governance and next step is you guys and we'll be continuing to involve um, both groups as we progress through our journey. So um, I have with me tonight some members that are on the committee. This is Martina Malang. She is from the YMCA. We do partner with the YMCA and the insurance center. So we have Janice Wavra as well. And um, an employee, Corinne Moling, she is a custodian at the high school. She is one of our, I believe, 11 employees on the committee. So um, they're just going to help with the presentation tonight. So we'll get started. So really just talking about why we got into the wellness program um, to start with. Okay, so um, one of the things that the Y talks about when we bring the program um, to employees is that helps understand the current health status. And one way we do this is through the biometric screening. And the biometric screening really helps us identify um, different things to develop and um, promote different um, interventions and programs, whether that's uh, maybe through the health screening we've identified some things like um, stress management or um, ways to lose weight so then we can implement programs for healthy eating and increasing physical activity. Um, the other things we looked at from an employee uh, personnel standpoint is um, helping to attract and retain our employees. So um, offering a program that we can have wellness opportunities, um, not just the physical side of it, um, but getting into all aspects of well employee wellness. Um, and then keeping those employees interested um, to stay here that we already have attracted to the district. Um, the other item was looking at reducing absenteeism. Um, that's one of our annual report measures that we do report um, to the board annually and trying to look at ways that we can help reduce that absenteeism and perhaps a healthier lifestyle will help to accomplish that goal. Good evening. From my perspective and involvement on the wellness committee is really trying to evaluate the outcomes of the biometric screenings and how the uh, outcomes compare to what we're seeing on the claim side on the group health insurance plans because there is a correlation between the risk factors that were identified on the uh, biometric screens versus the risk that we're seeing on the claim side. So we certainly want to be able to um, develop and enhance any wellness activities that we have that will help center around the areas where we know have risk and then trying to figure out ways to incorporate uh, healthier lifestyle choices, not only for the employees, but also for their families. So we need to find ways to engage the employees and their families because everybody that's covered in the health plan does have an impact on the overall claims annualization of the group health insurance plans. The other cost impacts too on the district that we may see cost savings on would be on the um, disability claims and workers' comp claims as well. So. A little bit about our committee. We started in June of 2014. We have 11 employees who um, submitted, um, I'll 
call it an application to join our committee. We ask them um, just different questions on what they can provide or offer to the wellness <coughs> committee, um, what they see as their impact on that team. Um, and then we partnered up with the YMCA because who better to provide us information about health and wellness and the insurance center for that health insurance claim side. And we meet once a month for about an hour and then the group also has um, things that they work on throughout the month until we meet again. Um, current wellness programming, so what we currently offer is we do an annual health risk assessment and biometric screening for all of our employees. We do fitness classes for employees. Those are offered through the YMCA actually on site in our buildings. We have some going on right now at Evergreen and Sand Lake. Um, those typically are yoga, Pilates, um, sometimes we do some other cardio type classes. Um, we've got the health fair at the high school. I'll let Corinne talk a little bit about that. Um, and then um, other health related activities, challenges, we do to do wellness bingo, um, fitness track device reimbursement, um, and then offering food service opportunities um, for healthy eating through our food service programs within each building. So we have a special a la carte menu for all of our employees that if they just want to get fruits or veggies, they can do that, so. Last year, we held a health fair at the high school. Um, one of the things that was very popular was the chair massages. <laughs> and, but it was just, it was a good thing to just have different people come in and people could talk to them about whether it was, you know, I want to lose some weight, I want to get into some classes, you know, they could find all different things and talk to these different people to find out, you know, oh, this is where I should go for this. And another thing that um, is the fitness classes, like Melissa had said, and they have some fantastic fitness classes. I did one last summer um, that they use for all the students to get ready for their fall sports. And they offered it to adults and it was very good. But I, at first when they kept saying, oh, you can do this, it's like, oh, I don't know. And by the end of the six weeks, yeah, I was able to do all those things that they said I could do. So it's amazing what, when you start with the wellness, what you can do with just a little bit of encouragement and you have people that know what they're doing. Um, so progress to date, we've um, really focused on our health risk assessments that we offer to the employees. Um, we also offer this to spouses if they are enrolled in the district health insurance plan. Everyone gets a $50 debit card just for coming in and doing their health risk assessment. Um, the major bonus for employees who are enrolled in the health insurance is that HRA um, benefit of $500 for single or $1,000 for family um, if you qualify under the health risk assessment. So um, the, oh, you can talk. Corinne will talk a little bit more about the health risk assessment. And one of the <coughs> things is they have, um, is it 71? Yep. That 71 is the benchmark. But if you're below 71 and the following year you move up five points, you automatically qualify for that. So it's, it, it's a real incentive to try and work towards, you know, even if you aren't the healthiest person, they have different things. And then they also have mm -hmm. where you can go to the Y and get coaching so you still qualify for mm -hmm. it. So it's, you know, it's a win-win situation. Yep, so there's always a way to qualify. If you don't score enough points or you don't increase your points, there's an opportunity through the YMCA to do some health coaching as well to qualify. Um, and then just looking at our committee, um, we still have the same members on the committee that we started with back in June of 2014, so keeping that consistent membership on the team. Um, so employees within their buildings know who they can go to with questions or um, information that they want to have perhaps a new program started within the building. Um, and then offering that personal um, rep at each building as well. Okay, so um, the Wellness Council of America or WellCOA sets up seven benchmarks to um, provide employees and work sites, um, um, just kind of that foundation to build upon. Um, we have also applied for the well, workplace assessment, which um, works to provide healthier environments within the work sites and recognizes work sites on um, three levels. So there's seven benchmarks, and for time's sake, I won't go through all seven of them, 
Um, one of them I will highlight is um, creating and supporting the environment. And that looks different for every building. One way that we are able to um, look into the environment of the, each building is by creating and going to the schools um, with focus groups. And um, we were to, able to identify just the different cultures within the buildings, um, you know, meet and how that culture um, was different for each building. For instance, the middle school, um, they were just looking for, you know, some breakfast options. And so how were we able to provide that? Um, in the high school, they're looking for more recognition things as well. So how can we create programs and incentives based on what the employees are looking for and um, not something that's just um, something online that we find that we implement across the board. So really just looking um, and creating those things based on the needs of the employees. So where do we need to um, move to improve with the program? Um, our committee has created a standard operating plan. We have four goals within that operating plan, and it looks at areas that we need to make improvements to sustain and improve our wellness program. Um, this year we're focusing on employee participation. Um, since we first started the health risk assessment, our participation has decreased by employees. So um, we're working really hard this year to figure out, um, we've looked at the data, done surveys, why aren't people participating? Um, is, it, um, is it because of the incentives being offered? Is it that they already know they're healthy? Is it that they know they're not healthy and they don't want someone else to tell them that. So trying to figure out ways that we can get um, employees to participate. So we've set a goal for ourselves on that. And looking at executive level involvement, one of the goals of Walcoa is um, CEO involvement and um, Chris would be our CEO. So um, getting her involvement and then coming to the board, getting um, feedback from you guys as needed. Um, our next step will be going to the leadership team, trying to incorporate different things in staff meetings, just little wellness tips for employees. So it can start to be talked about um, all the time in different things that we're doing um, as a district. Any questions? Are there any questions? Tom? How, many, how many participated and how percentage has it dropped? Um, in 2013-14, we had a 60% employee participation, and this year we were down to 49%. And is it because they don't see time, it's not worth it, or is it too hard to do some of the assessments, or do you have any idea? Um, the, there's lots of reasons um, that we found from people um, from <coughs> they already do it with their spouse's employer so they don't want to do it twice um, they're not comfortable with the feedback that um, I know I'm not healthy so please don't tell me I'm obese I already know that um, so Okay, I'm just curious too. Uh, would you explain again with the, with the why? What was that? You said some there's an option they have for the why. I didn't quite catch. Yep. So that. there's a reasonable alternative. Um, the government requires you to offer that with any wellness program where you offer an incentive. And our reasonable alternative is to do two health coaching sessions with a health coach at the YMCA. That's a good idea. So as long as those two coaching sessions are completed, they qualify then if they're on the health insurance for that. Five hundred or a thousand dollar HRA. Um, this program is it use statewide? Anything like this? Or is, is our district unique in doing this? Um, no, I know the Y works with um, the Onalaska School District um, and a lot of other local businesses. Um, under Welcoa, there's the Lacrosse. There's a Lacrosse so County. It's the yeah the Lacrosse County Well Works Place um, awards that they give out. So with our team of the people on our wellness team have actually applied for an award like that. So that includes the seven benchmarks, um, just kind of going through each one of those to see, you know, if we need them and how we need them. So, you know, number one, having that CEO support, um, creating a wellness team. So just having a wellness team, having an executive wellness team is part of that well workplace. Um, and then going into collecting data, creating an operational plan. Um, Melissa talked about some of the goals and objectives that we have. That's based on the um, operational plan that we've created. Um, and then going into, from that operational plan, um, choosing appropriate interventions, mm -hmm. creating a supportive environment, and then evaluating those outcomes. So when we apply for and we look at, well, workplace assessments, 
each business, each school district is um, accounted for in each one of those measures. I would say, Tom, that um, at the convention this weekend, well, this was kind of a hot topic too, a lot of breakout sessions and that, so we're not unique in that. Many other school districts are looking at that. So. Well, I think it's a good idea. I was just think, I was like, <laughs> I think we should stand out for it, because I think it's a really good idea. So, all right, thank you. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much. Now, I think as we hear about the wellness component, uh, as we look at insurance and other things, we'll have a better idea of what that exactly is. Mm -hmm. Okay, then the next thing is Adaptive Sports League assistant coach position. Mark. Oh, hello again. Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm here to request uh, an assistant position for the R Adaptive Sports League. Our Adaptive Sports League is a little over two years old and has been very successful. It uh, has provided an opportunity or expanded an opportunity for students with disabilities to participate in co-curricular activities and has uh, connected with local school districts and created a competitive type atmosphere where our kids can benefit from co-curricular co activities at a higher level. But because the students involved with this, this program have special needs, it, it's very difficult for one person to supervise uh, at a level that's needed while still being able to do all the coaching responsibilities <coughs> that have to happen in terms of setup, organization, uh, and, and working with the students in the activity. And so we're finding it a little bit challenging to try to find volunteers on a regular basis which leaves us shorthanded at times. I've checked with the other three school districts that also have Adaptive Sports League and they all have two coaching positions associated with uh, their programs. And so I, I come to the, the board requesting an assistant position for the three seasons for the Adaptive Sports League uh, to help out and make sure our students are not only enjoying their activity but are safe in that activity as well. So are there any questions? I think and before Mark would come to the, the board, um, they go through a number of steps in order to identify the needs of the, the position and all of those, and I, I suspect that all has gone through, and mm -hmm. so um, budgetary-wise, he's been able to identify those funds and everything. So this is not on this evening's agenda. It will be on the next meeting's agenda, correct? Is it on consent. the agenda? Oh, I'm sorry. It is on For tonight's the... consent? No. <laughs> no. Sorry. No. <coughs> yeah, I didn't think it was. It's for it's idea. next meeting. meeting. Consent. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Just report out and any discussion for you consent yes. at the next meeting. Yeah. So. so, this will come back. If you have any questions in the time being, please reach out yeah. to Chris for, for that. But thank you very much, Mark. Thank you. Okay, then the next item is the state assessment um, system report. Wendy Sadatsky. is going to give you all the details of what I mentioned in my <laughs> district admin report. So, it works. So take it away. <laughs> sure. So here's just an overview of our reports this evening. Um, just a little background. The Wisconsin Student Assessment System provides the school district of Holman information so that we can prepare kids for their future. It measures all of the core academic areas. You will see though tonight that my report specifically is around ELA, which is reading, writing, and math. Because last fall, or probably in January, I think I reported on the science and social studies results. So 
how the data is used really with our continuous school and district improvement. We use it within our PDSAs and is required by law. It must be reported in proficiency categories, which you will notice that that's a little bit <coughs> different when I talk about the ACT results. And the assessments, really, the purpose is to provide parents, educators, students, and our community with information about our schools and our and student performance. This is just an overview of what was included in the Wisconsin Student Assessment System last year. In a little while, I will talk about the changes for the upcoming year. So our results. The federal government requires that we have a 95 participation rate, and that is based on the normal grade level or the regular ed assessment and the assessment for students with um, significant cognitive delays, which in this instance is DLM or dynamic learning maps. And that requirement is 95%. You will see that overall as a district, we were 99.4 on the Badger exam, which tests students in grades three through eight. And our lowest participating subgroup was our students with disabilities, and they were at 96.38. So compared to the state, you will see that the school district of Holman was above the state participation rate. So if we go to our English language arts results, we do want to see the below basic and the basic for the district, which is the blue columns, shorter than the state. That means we're doing a great job. And we want to see our proficient and advanced above the state. And you will see in both instances for English language arts on the Badger exam and dynamic learning maps that our students were above. And as Chris mentioned, we were the best in our region. Another way to look at our data is to look at data, our subgroup data, and th this shows students with different backgrounds than, you know, than just the white students, and you will see that we are above the state in those categories also. And then looking at our typically lower performing subgroups, um, both assessments, you will see that our our English language learners, our low income, and our students with disabilities are all above the state level as long as in addition to their opposite cohort, which is good data to look at. You know, we will continue to look at, you know, how to close the gap between all of those, those different subgroups. And here is just an overview by grade level, and which is pretty impressive. We do see a, a dip in sixth grade, but you will notice that the state also sees a dip in sixth grade. But I know last week when we were meeting on our ELA PDSA, we were looking deeper why could that be and what can we do to avoid that dip. And this slide just compares us to our region, to La Crosse and on Alaska and the state, and you will see that we are above all. Now moving on to mathematics with the Badger exam and the dynamic learning map exam for, again, students in grades three through eight. You will see our below basic and our basic are below, below the state level, and that's where we want to be and are proficient and advanced are above the state level. And again, looking at those subgroups, our, our students with an Asian background are slightly below the state level, so just a piece of data for us to continue to look at why is that, you know, and, and add steps to our PDSAs. And then looking at our subgroups again for our English language learners, our low income, and our students with disabilities. And in all areas, we are above the state level. And again, by grade level, which each grade level was above the state level. 
than comparing us to our neighbors and the state. You will see that we are above the state, slightly behind on Alaska, and above La Crosse. So ACT, how the, these assessment results are different than the ones that I reported to you in August. These results are from the statewide assessment where the prior results were just students that chose to take the ACT. So this was reflective of all 11th graders that were in our district last year. There are five subject areas on the test and they are listed there. For our reporting and accountability purposes, when I talk about English language arts, it's the, the English, the reading, and the writing subtests that are put together to give us how we performed. Same with the Badger exam and the dynamic learning map. They do require the 95% participation rate. Overall participation rate was above that. And, but our lowest participating subgroup was our students with disabilities, and that was lower, and part of it was opt out, where parents did opt them out of taking the ACT, and part where students had just did not complete the ACT. So, but with that said, we are still, as a district above the state level, on ACT and you will see that the state did dip below that 95% as the state also. And for the ACT, something different in the way it is reported, usually you just report are they college ready or aren't they college ready. And they are now broken down into the four categories of below basic, basic, proficient, and advanced. And you will see our below basic, we are below the state level where we want to be. Our basic, we're a little above, but our advanced and proficient are also a little above. And if we look at our subgroups for just our Asian and our white, um, you'll notice that our Asian students actually performed above the state level and our just our white students did not. So further investigation through our PDSA process. And then our low income and our students with disabilities, you'll notice, you know, above the state level, except for our, our not low income students, which is interesting too. So more work for us to reflect on when we meet with that team. And then here it are our results for math, the ACT and dynamic learning maps. And you will notice again below basic is below the state level, but basic is slightly above and proficient and advanced are slightly above. And looking at our students with different backgrounds again, something that I think Patrice pointed out when we were in a meeting was that our Asian students outperformed our white students, which is unusual, but interesting data to look at. And then our, comparing our low income and our students with disabilities, you will see that there are, there are some areas for improvement, really looking at our students with disabilities and how do we close that gap and bring that level up and also our not low income, just like ELA, was below the state level. So overall, looking at how did we perform, and you will see Holman was above the state and lacrosse for English language arts, and but we were also above lacrosse in the state for math, but when I look at our neighbors on Alaska, we're quite a bit behind in math, so, you know, having conversations and thinking about what can we do differently. And then the bottom score, when I report in the spring, or in last fall, just of our students that took it voluntarily, they report the composite score. So this is the area composite average scores 
and I did look up states that do full testing of all students in 11th grade and the composite scores range from I think it was 19.6 to 20 points or 21.7 so we're really in the range where when all students are tested so spring this year we will be having a new assessment that will be replacing the Badger exam, and that will be the Wisconsin Forward exam. And it will be, like I said, administered this spring between March and May. And what is different, it will include science and social studies, where in the past we did do WKCE yet for science and social studies for those grade levels and then dynamic learning maps, ACT Aspire, ACT and work keys will also be given next school year. So moving and more moving forward, we continue to look at our data. You know, it's interesting looking at trends when our assessments keep changing, but you know, we are doing our best when we get together with our PDSAs to try to see where our opportunities you know, and where are we growing, so. So, again, if you have any questions, I, I can answer them for you, or? Any questions, Anita? Just the 95% threshold, what if? What if we don't reach the 95%? What if? So when we do have our school report cards again, next year we'll have deduction points on our school report card because because of that subgroup being below. And then what, what does that mean down the line? Yeah, overall, a lower score on our report card. Any um, insight in why the math is so much lower, much higher in Alaska? Do you have any? That's, that's quite a glaring number. I mean, all the other numbers look, look really mm. good. I mean, you're above averages and Right. Hot areas. I, was it school start times at all or anything like that? You know, it's. <laughs> <laughs> Had to get that in there, didn't yeah. you? Know? <laughs> you know, it's really hard to bring it just to one cause. Although, when you look at all the area scores, we're in line with the other area scores on Alaska is just <clears throat> doing something above and beyond. And I know it, I, have, I have a meeting with Roger to talk about that in the no. next week. Is it different? If it, is it different? curriculum maybe or something they're using different I don't know you know sometimes no. you get a cohort of kids that just perform very well sure and so it, you know so sometimes you get that one group and it could be just that one group because that number kind of sticks out like a sore thumb amongst all of them um, and that now if all of the other districts were there and we weren't then I'd be very concerned um, but yet it's definitely something that we're going to need mm -hmm. to look into and research to find out what it's happening because we really want to make sure I mean academically we're looking great three four five six seven eight you're seeing all this growth and then you know when we get to the high school ages those that assessment at that the ACT is definitely more rigorous I would say and it has a lot more and Jeff could maybe speak to this a little bit taking the ACT did you take the ACT yeah and just how much reading you have to do maybe it's a little different than other assessments that you've taken or I think, yeah, I don't know. I'm, personally, I'm not really a good test taker, but I thought the ACT, there's a lot more pressure on it than, I guess, the younger tests that you do. So, some of it's teaching strategy, mm -hmm. so. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you, Jeff. Tim? Question, for, for a number of years, our elementary school scores have been really best in class. It's just been mm -hmm. outstanding. However, for a number of years, our high school scores have been above average, but certainly not best in class. They've, they've been, you know, they're not bad, but they're not, you know, they've always lagged on Alaska when it was the 10th grade scores and things like that. Do we know, does on Alaska have block scheduling? They do not. And, and I've, anybody knows I've not been a fan of that. It, it exasperates the summer gap. It's a long time between subject matters. I continue to hear things about movies and classes because it's a long time to fill. And my sense is it's very well liked, but I have to ask, is it the best for student learning? 
I know that our high school is currently reviewing that, and that's one of their steps in their PDSA. They have been visiting other districts and learning about different types of scheduling. So, and it's not only you know just for core academics, but it's also looking at kids who need additional support. Where could we help them within the school day? So they, the high school is doing a great job investigating what else they can do. Thank you. Well, and to follow up on that, though, on Alaska seems unique. Do they have a unique kind of scheduling because of what they're doing, especially in that ACT where they're much higher in both of those areas than the other schools? I mean, it's not just us, but they're higher than La Crosse. They're higher than right. I believe, and is Bob here? I believe they have a modified block, so it is somewhat a block, but it's they've modified it quite a bit. So I don't know if I would call it a block schedule per se. So they do have a modified block. And Jeff? Yeah, I was going to add on to that. Uh, they have a block schedule Wednesdays and Thursdays. So they have eight classes Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday they have four classes and Thursday four classes. Yeah. Any other questions? And now my understanding is that the Badger exam is changing again. <laughs> Yes, going to the Wisconsin Forward exam. Is that better? It's, we don't know yet. We don't know yet. I, I, I go to a full day of training on it on Friday, so. And I think that's the difficulty with, you know, there was a time when the ACT was really directed toward those students who were anticipating going to, on to college, and now it's been changed, and it's mandated, and, and all of that, and you know, the test, test, test kind of mentality mm -hmm. is out there. But I did hear a story at convention about, you know, there's the pluses and the minuses to oh, that, definitely. but a young person who had never in their life thought about going on to college um, and did really, really well in the ACT, and um, it really opened their eyes to their potential, which, you know, so that, so you hear the pluses and the minuses of all of that. So it kind of reminds you that even though things are mandated and not necessarily what uh, district we might have chosen, there are some benefits to doing that too. So. so Wendy, if you have any questions for her, please feel free to let Dr. Mueller know and we'll get those to her. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. And then, Julie, we've got the 2015-16 budget revisions for the second quarter. <laughs> different than what was in our It's not any different than okay. what was posted. Okay. I have it. Yep. Good evening. The original budget was approved um, by the Board of Education on October 26th. I can't believe it's already been like three months ago. Um, <laughs> and at that time, it was the best estimate um, at the time of adoption of resources and cost of the activities of the school district for the 15-16 school year. Um, as the year progresses, there um, come some changes that have to be made. Um, in addition, in December, the Board of Education approved the establishment of Fund 80, the Community Service Fund for the daycare program. And so I will talk about that um, at the end of this um, presentation because it comes towards the end of the funds. Um, we'll begin, I'm just going to go through some notable changes and I've numbered the line items just like we did last fall so you can just follow across. Um, and we'll begin with um, line seven. So this is the format that is uh, DPI approved and it's very similar to the, the format that's published in the Courier um, following this presentation. The column all the way to the right, the revised budget is the one that we'll be talking about and I've also provided two years of audited um, data and the third column is the original budget that was adopted in October. So beginning with line seven, uh, total ending fund balance. 
Uh, it does show a slight increase um, of $61,000 estimated increase in fund balance at the end of June uh, 2016, the end of this fiscal year. This fund balance just barely increases um, our, tar our um, end of year fund balance. The board established targets a couple years ago um, to keep the fund balance within a range and the high uh, upper limit of that range is 23.21% according to those targets established I think in 2013. This brings us to about 23.19% something like that. Um, going forward you've we've talked before about the reason that we need fund balance um, i just wanted to review the, the fact that we did um, uh, approve a referendum the, the community approved a referendum last april um, and with that we were able to add funds for technology to the general fund um, with the agreement that we wouldn't increase the tax levy and therefore we under levied in our debt service fund the reason I'm bringing this um, to your attention again is in the past when we've had cash flow shortages in the general fund, we've borrowed from ourselves. And the fact that we are under in the debt service reduces that ability to borrow from ourselves. Um, and I'm bringing this to you because we do anticipate the need to recalibrate that upper limit of fund balance. Um, and we'll be bringing that forward in the next few months, the idea of increasing that range a little bit so that we do not have to go externally um, and borrow for cash flow needs um, and then pay interest to an outside entity rather than just within our own funds. I'm going to jump all the way down to line 56 just to show you that there is no change in the revenue budget at this time in the general fund. So it's the top of page 2. Um, Forty-four million five hundred sixty-seven thousand uh, dollars. I do anticipate that we will have a revision to this budget. I know, like example, currently um, Wendy is working on revisions to Title I budget. Um, in December, DPI posted the carryover funds for the Title funds budgets, and as those get approved by DPI, we will review, review, and revise revenue and expenditures for those grants. Next, I'll go through notable changes. Um, sorry, I just scrolled a little past where I wanted to be. So after the revenue uh, in general fund is the expenditure and other financing uses. Um, there is a reduction in estimated expenditures for both uh, undifferentiated curriculum and regular curriculum, lines 57 and 58. Um, there's a lot of reasons why we'd, we would reduce budget. Um, when we look at, we had a lot of vacancies that we were trying to create estimates for last um, summer and fall. Um, we also don't always know benefits that um, individuals are going to um, be eligible for or accept when they become um, staff members here in Holman. We also have uh, changes last year, mid-year, the district um, went with teachers on call for a teacher and educational assistant substitute contracting. And so with further analysis, um, reduced some budget and had to move some from what used to be um, employee salary and benefits for substitute positions and moving those things into contracted services. Um, so just some rearrangement. The overall change was 61,000, but the functions within those budgets, we needed to move some numbers. Um, so we did add and continue to monitor the teachers on call cost to the district. And as you know, we also, it's very difficult to predict substitute budgets because they can go up and down um, depending on leaves of absence within the district. Um, again, when we had the proposed and original budgets, we didn't know the final grant applications. And so those um, additional changes would be coming forth in the future. Salary and benefit budgets do make up 70% of the general fund budget. Um, these require regular monitoring and updating due to frequent changes, um, staff additions, transfers, resignations, and retirements. 
Next, I'd like to point out line 69, uh, function 260,000 central services. Um, this budget was increased by about 50,000, and that is to include um, a budget for wellness HRA carryover. The wellness HRA dollars do not expire, um, which means that they can continue to access them on a reimbursement basis. So there is a liability out there that the district holds, and so we should be budgeting um, to try to cover those prior year HRA claims. Uh, so we'll continue to carry some funds in the budget to cover those expenses. Um, they're also able, even though coinsurance doesn't carry over, they have a run out period. So we do get prior year coinsurance claims after July 1st using that run out period that they still have access to those dollars for reimbursement. So we're trying to be um, responsible and reserve some funds within that wellness budget for both current and prior year um, HRA reimbursements. The next line is line 72, other support services. Um, the area that was increased here is um, based on estimated retirement benefit liabilities. Um, so when people leave the district end of, at the end of the year and we have to pay out based on their, um, the agreements within contract um, just to have money set aside to help support those needs. Line 74 does not have a change, but I, uh, I want to bring it to your attention. This is the interfund transfer. This is the transfer that we make um, <coughs> historically to the Fund 27 Special Education Fund. Um, by law, the Special Education Fund cannot go into deficit. Um, and so it's nothing new, but I'm pointing it out because it, it is something that's a little bit uh, more variable and can change before the end of June. It's also the line that we would um, increase if the Fund 80 does end up um, in a deficit spending position in June. Last board meeting, Chris presented um, Fund 80, and you'll see that at the bottom here um, that the current estimate is that it would be about $8,000 in the hole, and so we would have to make a transfer from the general fund to make that balance. So line 78 is the total expenditures and other finances, financing uses for the general fund. And it is a slight decrease from the original budget last October, $61,000. <clears> Next is the special projects funds. For our district, it includes funds 21, which is the gift accounts, and then um, fund 27, which is special education. There's just minor changes here. We did have approved grants for the carryover added to both the IDEA flow through federal money and the IDEA preschool grants. And so those have been adjusted along with um, minor adjustments to some of the gift accounts. The debt service fund um, has no change from the original budget. The food service fund has no change from the original budget. And then lastly is the Community Service Fund, Fund 80. Um, the estimated revenues for that fund are 45,900. The estimated expenditures are almost 54,000, leaving the deficit there that you see in red of around $8,000. Um, I know that Chris has been working with Tim and Sue trying to identify um, revenue sources and additional student enrollment potentially to help make up that difference. Again, if it ends in a negative position, we'll make a transfer from the general fund as was shared in the last meeting in order to make that um, net zero. Are there any questions? Any questions? So I would note this is on our consent sure. agenda this evening. So if you have any questions, now is the time to ask. We had a really good meeting. But there wasn't any coffee like there usually is. Oh. Oops. <laughs> no coffee? Oops. Sorry. So no questions, Tom? No. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Thank you, Julie. So then we'll call on Mr. Daly for discussion of the high school gymnasium floor. Good evening. <clears throat> I 
this is more not so much the the uh, gym floor itself, but how we're going to fund it. Um, just to give you a little history, we we sanded that floor. I think it was 2012, maybe 13. Um, thinking, knowing that that was going to be the last time we're going to sand that floor. The next time we're going to have to replace the floor. Uh, we're hoping to get seven to ten years out of it. Um, we're not going to make it. I had that in the uh, capital improvement or capital replacement budget uh, for 2017, 18, 18, 19 to be done in the summer of 2018 over two budgets because it is a fairly high priced issue to replace that floor. Um, the floor has gotten to be the condition in the aisle is, is so bad that we just we just can't wait until 2018 to do that. We have to do that now. Since we've sanded that floor, we've had the um, flooring company come in every year, make repairs on the floor. I think the floor has gotten so thin it just breaks very easily. Um, we have made temporary repairs ourselves throughout the school year, and um, we just really don't have a choice. We need to replace that floor. So I met with Jay initially, and then with Jay and Chris and, and Julie, and talked about how we could fund this uh, and do it this year. And of course, we looked at fund balance. Um, we've done, we've used fund balance on other maintenance projects in the past, a roofing project we did, a lighting project, which we paid back through the uh, capital improvement budget um, in, in subsequent years. So um, I've started working on um, specifications already, talking to some flooring contractors. Um, but really the first, the first thing we need to do is get board approval to, uh, to use the fund balance to pay for this project this summer um, uh, as the initial source of funding ultimately through, it would be paid through buildings and grounds or other appropriate non-district funding sources as you see on the, on the uh, issue paper. Um, I don't know. Do you have any questions about that? Just sure. Curious, we talked a little bit about it too. Is it going to be the same type of floor? Are you, you going to use a different kind of material? Or are you no, it, it'll be it'll be a wood floor. Um, I didn't know how detailed you wanted me to get, but uh, you don't have to go in a lot of detail. Well, I, I'll tell you what. I can tell you the, the the initial floor that was put in was just an old spec they used back when they built initially built that building. And probably shouldn't have been used. It just doesn't hold up. There's a lot better specs out there for floors. Um, and, and the specification we'll use this time will be a much more durable floor than the floor that was put in. Um, um, they'll also, because, of, because it's going to be a little bit higher floor, part of that cost is actually raising that wall, that moves that movable wall. That has to be raised up because the floor is going to be a little bit higher. Uh, we have to then raise up all the backboards. So there's some other costs included in there uh, because we're going to put in a, a much better flooring system. So you're saving money the first time. Now, now it's kind of biting you a little bit, eh? You got it. Yeah. We, we actually, I can tell you, we, we, uh, the flooring contractor who initially put that in proposed way back when, when the high school was built, uh, to put in a better floor for us. Um, at the same cost, uh, but it would have cost $10,000 to raise that wall already because that was already installed. And at that time, the board and whoever was in charge of the construction decided they didn't want to do it at that time. Is, so, is that gym used year round? That gym is used year round. We get a week maybe to 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 uh, clean and put new finish on it, and and that's it. It's used from. Volleyball season right through summer until the end of July. I know when I've been on the Yes Holman committees, it's always a challenge to get in here. Yep. So. Other questions, Tim? One, one question, and, and certainly sure. I support you know a good floor for the GM. I know that I've certainly supported when we've done the roofing projects in the past. Um, I do have a question, and mm -hmm. maybe it's more for Julie, but when we, and, and it's probably a good thing as we just saw that budget looks like the fund balance is increasing a little bit. I know that's a concern of Julie and Jay's as we talked about this. But, she, but they'd also mentioned, you know, that there is a point where, you know, we don't want to have to start externally borrowing. Is there any concern, and not to 
put Julie back on the spot, that this could cause that situation to occur in borrowing from the fund balance? Well, I'll start and then you can chime in whenever you would like. So the, the reason you'll you notice there's a quite a surplus in our budget this year is to build up our fund balance because we are not able to borrow against our debt services mm -hmm. like they had talked about. But what the idea is what's happening, this is a project that he said was two years out. Well, obviously we have to take care of it now. So the idea is we would pay back the fund balance over time. So initially we wouldn't have any loss of fund balance because if we were just to borrow against the fund balance, then we would be losing a quarter of a million dollars, mm -hmm. which we can't afford to do that at this point in time. Mm -hmm. Um, we have to keep building our fund balance up. So when we do go to have a building project of some sort, we have enough in there. So our bond rating is is decent in that. So I don't know if you want to, you know. It will place additional stress on our cash flow needs. Uh, there's no doubt. Julie's done some great work to comb out some details on that. We shared some preliminary information with the finance committee tonight. Um, it's entirely possible that for the first time in several years, we'll need to do some short-term borrowing. It looks like a maybe a two-week window of time is what we're looking at. Um, is there any possibility of delaying any of the projects that were slated before That's this? a good question. Um, this summer, our big project, we plan on working on the middle school, taking out the middle school track and such. That was really, um, really one of the focuses as we talked about uh, that we talked about during the referendum, and I, I, I just hate to put that off. I think we made some commitments to the public there, and I think we really need to do that. And that's going to be a costly project as well. Um, and, and, and you all know, you've been out there. It, it, it's something we need to do out there. Other questions? Well, the only other thing I'd like to mention is in helping to possibly offset some of the costs. Um, I put in your board packet just the the policy on commercialism in schools. Um, there's there's lots of options, yeah, but we want to ensure that we could use the fund balance if needed. And how much of it we'd have to use, we don't really know at this point in time. But um, we, you know, John wants to get a start and get bids and get moving, so it could be a summer project. So that's why we came right now. But I still think we could have discussions about, you know, are there other avenues of funding sources that we could reach out to possibly also. So I just wanted to put that bug out there. I know that we, you mentioned athletics, but first and foremost that gym floor is a classroom. It is. Or multiple classrooms. And so as a school district, we're responsible to make sure that our classrooms are safe um, for our students and you know quality and we've done it appears we've done what we can to <coughs> maintain it to this point but um, certainly need to take the steps to rectify that and if you know, I know that in the past few years we've had uh, some one-time kind of projects one-time expenditures that maybe we won't be able to have next year also as a possibility for um, what we're doing um, in order to to fund that and there are things I know the commercialism in schools there's so many other things out in the community right now I wouldn't necessarily support us going out and asking any one entity to fund that for us because it is our responsibility but there may when you mention the baskets and raising the wall and some of those things maybe some of the smaller parts of that project we could ask the community to support with some appropriate signage but I don't know that I personally want to see advertising on our floor you know with the we have the policy in place to be able to do that though and um, you know if we can get a hundred thousand two hundred thousand you know then we can use that in other maintenance issues that much sooner so I hate just to throw it out but <laughs> I know there's a lot of other things going on out in the community but and I don't know if we want to be competing with those right now so Mm -hmm. but, but I understand that's there that's are your, needs your and like decision. I said if there are some components of this John if you can put that together you know some of the uh, components of this that might be like 
um, some of the sports parents sports groups or even some of the um, commercial entities might be willing to support that you know thirty forty thousand is still thirty forty thousand dollars mm -hmm. absolutely versus that mm -hmm. um, might be able to and if we come out in the black this year again too maybe some of those dollars could be targeted toward that project but okay. what I understand with the gym floor with the nails heads exposing themselves they're starting to be yeah. starting to be exposed and that's really what that's real brought me to issue. Jay was um, you know we've had some things break and come loose that we've had to fix but a couple that, weeks ago that's a no-brainer you got to fix that and absolutely it is a I was it, it's definitely a classroom of competition yep. And, yep. and anything else I don't know if the middle school track is ASAP ish so I still think there's I understand your commitment to the voters and I agree with that but mm -hmm. But I don't know if that would be a, for me, that's an area of, that's still a little bit, and I mean, if you went to the voters and said, listen, the floor is falling apart, you know, these are safety issues and we all use it, I would see the voters and say, well, yeah, let's fix that and track, let's wait a couple of years. That's my opinion. The one thing we want to be careful about is the, um, and Mr. Vogler's here, he might be able to help too with it, is the outdoor area with the track and all that is a classroom too for our FIED yes. folks. So it's kind of like, we have a gym, and then we have our, our track um, out there that also is used by FIAD classes in that facility, too. So it's kind of like, how, you know, how do you pick it, and choose? Is, is and when a knee comes, a gym? knee comes. Is it so. as dangerous as a gym, though? Because if you fall in the gym and you get exposed nails and you're cutting your arm and you're bleeding, that's really bad. Mm -hmm. with, a, well, with the track, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how you, how you rate them. I don't know. We, we do have to... Um, listen to the people that we hire to make decisions like this and um, they put things forward to us we don't I mean my last experience with the track was when my girls were running it and they're both out of college now but I remember how bad it was then <laughs> so I would assume and it was a classroom to them then mm -hmm, and an after school mm -hmm. thing and yes it is that bad yeah there's, names, there's gaps but there's they gaps did twist in there and miss you know miss track meets because of it and could have been worse so I, I would trust that whatever know. is put forward first. I don't want to sit up here and second guess. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just want to, you know, the purpose of my question wasn't that I don't support this because I oh, do. Absolutely. It's just to understand all of the ramifications and, and what we're doing. And just to throw my two cents in on that middle school track, it is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Your daughter's ran it too. <laughs> I, I still dwell and it's not covered in snow go over there oh. occasionally. And that's an accident. That's an accident waiting to happen there as yeah. well. So. Okay. Well, we look forward to hearing more about it. And thank you. You will. Mr. Daly for thank all you. the work you've thank done you, on John. this. Right. So thank you, John. Thank you, John. Okay, then the next item is the consent agenda <coughs> item. There are um, eight items on the consent agenda this evening. Would anyone like to have any item uh, pulled so that it can be considered separately? If there aren't any, I th would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items as presented. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Okay, a motion has been made and seconded to approve the consent agenda items as presented. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. <coughs> motion carries. Board member reports. And, oh, you are going yes. so fast, but I have one recognition to give okay. in our personnel report. Um, we've had a school nurse, and she's at our middle school right now, Amy Big John, and she's actually um, retiring. And, she's put in 15 years in our district so we just wanted to thank her for her service and all of her work um, with the students in that area okay sorry thank go you. ahead That's okay <laughs> just want to make thank sure thank you for getting that in there yeah so then board member reports and discussion i'll call on board members to report on any committee reports um, that they've attended and comments they'd like to present so anita jagazinski um <clears throat> thank you we, I attended the Personnel and Governance Committee, of which you are the chairperson, so I will let you speak to that. Um, I also attended the WASB convention last week for three days in Milwaukee, um, jam-packed with information on every topic you would want to um, become educated about as far as public education in Wisconsin. Um, I didn't get all my notes together to present anything at the meeting tonight because I'm still pretty tired from <laughs> from all that walking, 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 and listening and trying to um, make sense of everything. But I listened to speakers on the transgender issues, especially in schools. I was pretty interested to hear about that. Um, 
we we got a lot of information on that and conflicting information from all different sides and walked out of that going well there's no clear-cut answer to anything and what the state is proposing doing conflicts with what the federal <coughs> government says you can do and um, I also listened to a session on student achievement and improving school culture to benefit all students a couple legislative updates um, a very good session on teacher compensation uh, listen to Tony Evers, the state superintendent, twice, and he talked about the state of public education in Wisconsin, which was oh, a whole nother ball of wax. Depressing, but kind of um, makes you want to work even harder to get our um, public schools funded um, the way they should be funded. And I also went to a session on effective leadership, healthy school culture, and a couple other ones that I didn't have time to write down here while I was trying to look back through my agenda as I said here, but my gosh. And a couple meals we ate with the La Crosse School Board one night and yeah. talked about different ideas. We had breakfast with people from districts all around the state and lunch with other districts and just, you know, when the sessions were done late in the afternoon, you talked to people from in the lobby of the hotel till all hours just kind of talking about what their district is doing what your district is doing and you know you you learn all kinds of things it's just an incredible experience and it's, I think I've gone for 18 or 19 years now and I would not miss it it's wonderful um, I'd also like to congratulate Mike Gasper for his award and congratulate Karen Coleman wow we are pretty lucky in Holman to have these people working here really really lucky <laughs> um, and I also want to get my yearly plug-in for the Renaissance dinner because I've emailed oh, yeah. the board members twice and only <laughs> heard back from a couple of them um, that is <coughs> February 25th and anyone else that I haven't emailed who would like to sit at my table and have me wait on you hand and foot all night the tickets I think are $30 still this year it's at Drugan's on February 25th you wait on us? Yes. I do. You wait on she us? Yes. Too, yes. I yeah. bring food. And now and she has competition because I have a table. Oh. <laughs> oh. I am thinking about who to recruit yet. <laughs> so, anyhow. I'll let you know about that. And I'm not competitive. I'm really not. I'm just kind of like, oh, I don't ever go for the tip Sorry. trophy. But it's, it's Thursday, February 25th, and it's so fun, and it's for such a good cause to raise money for Renaissance which gives awards and recognitions to the kids at the high school for improving their grades and achieving good grades and all kinds of good things. So please, please, if you can join us that night, it's a Thursday, it would be wonderful. The dinner's at six. Thanks. And um, I believe the tickets are available now and if they're not, they will be soon at the high school office or you can email me or call me or whatever, contact me through the district website or just raise your hand in the audience and I'll write your name down if anybody <laughs> wants to attend. So. I think that's all I have. That has to be one of the longest. That is, ones you've I, I'm done. not a big talker, but <laughs> tonight, yeah. Thank you, Anita. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Menninger. Um, I'll be the opposite end tonight. Oh. Maybe be one of the shortest I've ever had. I've had no committee reports, and uh, so no additional comments tonight. Thank you, Mr. Dunlap. I don't have a single thing to say. All right, <laughs> Mr. Cruz. I have several. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to say I, uh, I, I mimic Anita on the, the Karen, the coach, and Mike Gasper. I think they are really good leaders for our schools. It's always fun to hear these stories of uh, these little uh, snippets of what's going on around here that uh, makes you proud to be living in this area. Um, I, uh, the finance committee meeting was very interesting. It's always uh, get, it's kind of, I, I find the numbers very fascinating and it's uh, and I feel real confident that Jay and Julie and uh, their staff are doing really well with that. Um, as a board member, we're always looking to save money some or to you know, watch the budget long term. And I, I think we're, we're heading in the right direction there too. We're also forward thinking people. And as a school system, and I want to keep Holman strong, I think Chris is doing a really good job. I think she thinks outside the box. Um, I like to see that. This is National School Choice Week. There's um, 16,140 events across the country. There's 314 events in Wisconsin. And the reason I bring that up, and it's not as a negative toward Holman, is that's not why I'm here. I'm here to promote the district. Is I always thought was the last meeting we had, there was just so much talk about how good Dr. Teddy is. And he's got a great clinic. I've used it several times. He's a very skilled surgeon or a doctor. 
And why do I bring that up is because Holman likes choice. The employees like choice. Students, parents like choice. We should always keep that in mind and we keep thinking outside the box to keep this district strong. That's our job as board members is to think 10, 5, 20 years down the road to keep the place strong. So that's my little plug. I think we're doing a good job, but I just want to keep us reminded we've got to stay on the course. Thanks. Thank you. And then Mr. Young, Jeff. Uh, so last week I talked about uh, buses and chairs. And for the chair problem, I kind of looked into it by myself. And I figured out that when DECA opens their school store during the winter, um, that shuts down a lot of the tables inside the store before they're, uh, I don't know how you say it, like made the store in that area because there's like lunch tables in there and then kids go in there. But when that's not available, then the lunchroom gets overloaded. So I don't know how to fix that, but that's just an idea. Because last year, um, lunch wasn't available. Like you couldn't go with in there and eat lunch, but now this year you can. So um, I guess we never thought about that. Mm -hmm. uh, for the buses, I would just say to make sure, like, because I think they only um, requested one bus, but they needed two. So, <laughs> yep. And I hope everyone drives home safe because when I went here, I had some troubles. But yeah, it's a little slippery, getting slippery. <laughs> Not bad. Well, and I do know that um, they did, the Buildings and Grounds Committee did a study of our capacity and they were looking at the capacity of the buildings and they identified that some of our common areas like the lunch area are not adequate for the capacity of the building. And so um, it is an issue that they are considering and looking at. So, but as you raise that issue about the chairs, and now the fact that, well, this is something that happened and that's why there weren't enough chairs at that time. I'm hoping that the, you know, people in your building will keep that in mind so that in the future um, they'll have that consideration. So thank you for bringing that to our attention. Um, anything else? Uh, Just drive safe, right? Yeah, well, last week was finals week, so I hope students that did good keep on doing good. And if you didn't do good, this is a new start. So. <laughs> Well, and it was nice. nice of you to come in today, even though it was a day off, so. Yeah, so thank, thank you. you. Well, I have a couple things. First, I would like to mention that the candidates forum, we have a primary this year because we have five um, candidates running for two spots. So at seven o'clock, there is a candidates forum for those five candidates on Feb February 1st. So that's coming up. Is that next Monday? Yes, oh, already is. next Monday. Is that next? It, yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. it is. It is next Monday. So if you want to come and support those candidates, I know that um, is always helpful to them. Otherwise, if you want to watch, it will be broadcast, taped, and then broadcast as well. Um, so, and that is the typical sequence where there will be introductions and then um, some questions. And with the five candidates, an hour. It's going to be an hour, and that is a lot of time when you're the one answering those questions. So. <laughs> Um, I think that will be something if you, as a board members, if you could come out to it, that would be a great thing to, to do. Um, Karen and um, Mr. Gasper, I also would like to congratulate them. Um, it's nice to see those folks being recognized for the work that they are doing. Um, the convention was a great convention. Um, it was interesting to me to watch the diversity of um, attendees kind of growing a little bit and then we heard at our breakfast uh, the one morning from a woman who was affiliated with the Milwaukee Public Schools and how she started off of small means and from a very poor home and how she was not thought to be um, 
higher ed, you know, material kind of thing and how she exceeded all of those expectations and worked out, worked on and, and was successful. And she was very inspiring and very motivational. So it's, that's one of those things that I really love to hear. And then the superintendent of the year was a woman from Kettle Moraine. Um, and she talked about how she was raised in northern Minnesota and sh her parents were sharecroppers. And so I'm like, oh, I'm hearing this kind of a similar story. And she actually quit, co quit college before she graduated and went back and at age 42 started teaching. Um, and now is the superintendent and the superintendent of the year. And she was so inspiring and motivational as well. And it was all about their fortitude and their commitment to educating and helping young people. That was what inspired them and what moved them to do the work they're doing. Um, and I attended a number of other sessions, the compensation models. There were a couple of those sessions since I'm uh, helping on a committee on that. But, I also attended a session, it was called the Brown Deer Way, and for building administrators, I found that to be very moving as well. We've, they, what they did was they have combined their um, PBIS kind of behavior with, they've identified what the Brown Deer Way is, and they actually do some character education in the classroom, and, and the students help drive what that curriculum is. The first year they started off, and it was all teacher-led and teacher curriculum, but the students said, this really isn't you know, hitting home for us. So they worked with the teachers to identify what would be some things that they would like to do, some activities, some videos, some craft work. I mean, it was a whole um, gambit of things that they did. And what they found was the reduction in referrals to the office in the elementary level and the middle school level was reduced significantly over a couple years. Um, and they were having some real tension there, some racial tension as well and that kind of thing. And so they were able to bring all that character education, uh, PBIS, whatever you call it, you know, and, and conform it to the full school district. And the fire station talks every week, they'll put up a sign about the Brown Deer Way. And this is the theme of the month or the theme of the week. And they do it. The grocery stores were putting it out, the um, businesses in town on their signage. And so it, it's not just about what happens in that school building, but what's happening in the community. And it just struck me that that's something Holman might, you know, pick up on because we, we really are one of those communities where the uh, big central focus of the community is the school district. And a lot of what, you know, community members do and participate, whether it's theater or um, the school plays or um, athletics or all of those things that really kind of thrive around the school district. So it was just something Brown Deer, I can send you some information if you're interested, but um, it was really kind of a, a positive, a real positive um, convention for me. So so that is it, yeah. That's me. Yeah. So um, school board, I would just say that we have committee written reports in your packet from finance, student achievement, and buildings and grounds and personnel and governance. Um, the February 8th is a, and the 22nd are our regular board meetings. I won't be here on the 8th. I've already shared that with Anita. And having said that, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. We are adjourned.